Good afternoon, team. This is Chaplain Newland, your never daunted Koa Shepherd, with this day's dose of spiritual resilience. It is Thursday, April 9th, and we just hit the Koa time early release, heading into a four day weekend, which used to mean something. We are still at HPCon Charlie, posturing for HPCon Delta, and this is episode five of this virtual ministry response to the COVID 19 pandemic. Remember, social distancing is real but spiritual distancing is not authorized. I'd like to begin today with a prayer. This is the prayer for Maundy Thursday, and I'll say more about that in a second. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So today is Maundy Thursday. What is Maundy Thursday? Maundy is a Latin word that has come down to us in the church that means something like command. And we call this day that word because this is the day where Jesus left us the commandment to celebrate his memory in the sacrament of communion and or maybe to wash each other's feet. There's three big pieces of Maundy Thursday. The first piece is the celebration of communion. Uh, even in churches that don't do a lot of communion celebrating, this is a day when they probably do. And for the Episcopal Church, it's a big deal. We celebrate communion in a special way and with special reverence on this night. The other thing we do on Monday Thursday is we wash feet. We read the story in John's Gospel of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, and in many places we reenact that, either everyone present or a select group or whoever would like to volunteer. We wash each other's feet as part of the ritual action of the Monday Thursday service. And then the last thing we do, and this isn't universal, but it's something that I love, is we do at the end of the service what we call the stripping of the altar. It's this beautiful way to enter into the darkness of Good Friday. After the Eucharist is celebrated and everybody's feet are washed, we take apart the sanctuary, particularly the altar area. We remove all the candlesticks and snuff the candles. We pull the altar linens off we take off any hangings that are on the different pieces of furniture up there. We remove the great ceremonial Bible from the lectern and take it away. We pull everything that isn't nailed down, basically, off of the altar area. The clergy, the priests, the deacons, the other servers, we remove the church vestments we're wearing down to just the, the bottom layer. And then we wash the altar. Uh, usually the priest will do that, wash the altar and even anoint it with oil. Uh, different ways this is done in different places. It's not prescribed, but it's a ritual that I love. And then everybody leaves the service, not uh, to a hymn or to a procession or to an alleluia, but just in silence and darkness. The lights are dimmed after the altar area is stripped and we just walk out. Um, which I suppose happens in some places, but in a, in a liturgical ritual church, uh, that's very disconcerting to feel. Uh, and it's meant to be. It's meant to be. It brings us in to Good Friday, which is tomorrow. So the other thing about Monday Thursday is that it is the first day of the Triduum. Today's the day for weird Latin words that we still keep. Triduum means the three holy days, and it refers to these next trio of days. Monday, Thursday, today, Good Friday, tomorrow, and holy saturday which is the vigil the great vigil of easter uh, those three holy days that we are going into this time in a different way so i wanted to share a little scripture with you um, before i let you go today this is the gospel lesson which is assigned for morning prayer today i read this uh, with our online morning prayer group this morning and i wanted to read it for you so this is uh, the gospel of mark chapter 14 verses 12 to 25. Let's hear that. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go 
and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover. So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. And he said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Here ends the lesson. As I read that text this morning, of course it brings us into Good Friday. Jesus foreshadows his betrayal, which will happen tonight. But as I read those last words, the words of institution, we call them, the words where, the words that we repeat in the Eucharist of Jesus taking bread and breaking it and calling it his body and taking the cup and sharing it and saying, this is my blood, this is the covenant. Um, I was struck by those words. I say them normally a couple times a week when I say mass or celebrate the Eucharist, but I haven't said them in weeks now because Here we are, stuck in our homes, and not that I couldn't do communion, but I can't do it without others, and it's just me. So I'm missing that ceremony, I'm missing that ritual, and I know I'll miss it at Easter as we move into this weekend. And I suppose that you're missing things too. We're all missing something in this circumstance, and I just want you to know that Those missings will come to an end. We will be reunited, whether it's with the sacrament of Eucharist in our churches or with our families who we can't see now and wish we could be with. We will be reunited. This time will end and we will be once again together in the ways that we can't be right now. I want to leave you with um, another prayer. This is the Maundy Thursday prayer that is said at the foot washing And it has parts for me and it has parts for you. So I'm going to read the me parts and I'm going to put the you parts up on the screen. And if you'd like to read back with me, that would be great. Let us pray. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples that you have love for one another. Amen. All right, team, that was your never daunted spiritual fitness moment, and I'm Chaplain Newland, your Koa Shepherd. Until my next transmission, keep the faith, practice what you preach, and care for those around you. Signing off.